Hello, data wizard. It's a me, Maria. No, but it's actually Mattia. But I thought the intro works pretty good with the topic that we're gonna discuss today. Because today we're gonna talk about Mario charts. Fun fact, the name came about because the chart resembles a platforming level in one of the old platforming games. Let me steer you in the way of using this useful chart just like you can steer yourself to some action by using Zebra BI. Create easy and beautiful reports in any of the most popular platformers. I mean platforms for data reporting. So waterfall charts are ideal to show how the positive and negative changes result in the difference from our starting point to our end point. And before we move forward, I think it's very important to note one more thing. You're gonna hear a lot of different names for waterfall charts. Some of them being a little bit more professional, like bridge charts, and the others a little bit more fun, like the flying brick chart. Oh. <laughs> Still, the story behind it stays pretty much the same, no matter the name. So let's move forward to our first point. When would we use a waterfall chart? Well, they're mostly used in financial reporting as they give us the best overview of which financial indicators affect our bottom line the most. Other uses would be visualizing profit and loss statement, comparing product earnings, highlighting budget changes on a project, analyzing inventory or sales over time, showing product value over a period of time, and of course, for creating executive dashboards. Now let's talk about how to create a waterfall chart in Excel. So a few years ago, the process of making a waterfall chart in Excel would require so much work. Everything from starting points to variances, differences between everything, invisible bases, just a lot of complications. And I have to be honest, I still remember those times. Pepperidge Farm remembers. But today, everything, just like most things, is a lot easier. As Excel already offers support for waterfall charts natively. However, we still have to fidget around quite a bit to get the visualization as effective as it possibly can be. We will go into Excel now and try to create a waterfall chart with some sample data from our fictional Zebra BI farms. Let's go! So hey guys, welcome to Excel. So today we're going to do two different variations of the waterfall chart. So the first is going to be a two total waterfall chart and the second will have multiple totals. All right, let's get to it. So before we start anything in Excel, of course we need the data. And what I thought of we could do is, is to check the contributions to our EBITDA for Zebra Farms, our fictional uh, company that raises horses and see what different contributions from these different business units that we have, we have five, uh, result in to our total EBITDA score. Okay, so if we look here, we have the data and after we have the data, inserting or actually making a waterfall chart is pretty easy. So we'll just navigate here under insert and then click waterfall chart and <laughs> you might say that's it but there's still quite a little bit of fidgeting that we have to do to get this chart to actually look the way that we want to so first of all we have to tell him what are the totals so we'll click on our 2021 data series and choose it as total click on the 2022 series right click set as total and there we have it Okay, so this is looking more like a waterfall chart already. Um, and we can see quite clearly that, uh, you know, some of the, some of the contributions are pretty well seen and the others not so much. Plus, there's quite a lot cluttering the chart. So let's, let's start, let's start really removing a few things to see if maybe we can see the contributions a little bit better. So if we click on the chart, go here under this plus sign, we have all the chart elements and let's just start removing them one by one 
So first the grid lines and it's already a lot better. Then the legend because I think we can uh, discern the decrease and increase by ourselves quite uh, easily. And also we can get rid of the primary vertical axis there. Alright, so this should be good. Then we'll leave the chart title. We can just write something like edit that. So we know exactly what's it, uh, what's it showing. And that's pretty much it. However, I'm not sure if this really helped us with the contributions. So the contributions are still pretty, pretty small. One thing that would really help us if we could break this uh, this axis here to, you know, see the contributions a little bit better. So what this would do is actually kind of zoom in on the top part of the chart, which would make the contributions larger, right? All right, so let's let's do this. We can do this, but we have to again put in the primary vertical axis, right click on it, format, and we're going to set the minimum to something like 35,000. All right, good. We'll close it. And yeah, we can see that the contributions are a lot more visible now. We can go and get rid of the primary vertical axis again. And that's it. This is, this is, this is quite a nice waterfall chart already, I guess, but I'm still wondering quite a few things. So now the contributions are better visible, but to somebody that doesn't know, they wouldn't really know that we we that we we started not from zero you know so they wouldn't know that this chart now starts from thir 35,000 and also what I'd like to know is I mean we can see we're doing better right it's pretty clear to see but how much better are we actually doing how how much is this difference it would be cool if we had something to really highlight this difference as well um, in Excel that's practically impossible but there are other options that some consider to be unnatural now we have this pretty basic chart already made here let's move forward to a little bit more complicated one uh, so let's check a waterfall chart that would show us gross revenues to net income for one of our business units, so one of our Zebra Farms business units, okay? And since we already have the data, this should be pretty easy to do. Um, you'll notice that I left a number here and I'll explain this later. So I'll just choose all of this data. And again, I will navigate to insert and choose waterfall chart. And of course, since repetition is the mother of learning, we have to do everything that we did before again. So first, let's set the totals. So gross revenues is not a total, but net revenues is. So set net revenues as total. Then again for gross income, right click, set as total. And then also for net income, right click, set as total. All right, and this is a waterfall chart that's looking pretty good. However, again, we have to wait. Okay, there is something wrong, and the keen eye, uh, in, for the keen eye from you, already saw that there's something wrong with this chart. And of course, uh, you guys can see it, but maybe I can help you better see it if I declutter the chart first. So let's get rid of the legend, the grid lines, the chart title, since it makes pretty much sense because of all the all the categories that we have, and also get rid of the primary vertical axis. And now. Okay, it's pretty clear to see that something is wrong here. And okay, so I did this on purpose. Ah! Right? <laughs> I did this on purpose so I can show you guys that Excel actually doesn't do any calculations uh, on his part. So, although this chart doesn't make any sense, so of course this column should be at least still up here, right? So, it's completely satisfied to just make a bridge towards this category, this total, uh, although it makes no sense. This means that for everything that you do here, every waterfall chart that you do, make sure that all the calculations that you make are really correct, so you can get a perfectly looking beautiful chart that actually makes sense. Okay, um, there is however something more, so we decluttered the chart, the chart is looking pretty good now, however there's still something that I would like to do to make this chart 
more readable. And that is um, actually turn it vertical. <laughs> Since it has this long categories right here, it's really hard to read. So that's why what I'd like to do is make this into a vertical axis chart. And you can't really do this in Excel unless you would copy this, paste it as a picture and just turn it sideways. But uh, I think there, there is a better way to do this. Um, let's check it out. And this brings us again back to Zebra, Zebra BI. So if we now have our data for our business unit, just like we did before, we simply navigate to insert my add-ins, Zebra BI charts for office. And now just using the chart slider, we're going to go and we are going to find the waterfall chart. This is it. Okay, and the only thing we have to tell it now is what are our totals. So just click on, on our category, click it as a result, and also, and also click on the one, choose a result, and that's it. And we can also see that we are doing 2.2% better. And we can also change this to an absolute number or keep both, which I actually prefer. So now we can see exactly what the difference in the the differences between 2021 in EBITDA and 2022. Um, but we also said that we have another thing that's bothering us, which is also the point here, which is we can't really read these uh, contributions very well. With Zebra, with a single click of a button, you can break the y-axis and now we get a beautiful representation of all the contributions and also visual re representation that the chart is not actually starting from zero, but is showing you a zoomed in part of the contributions for better understanding. So perfect. This is, this is the kind of waterfall chart I would like to have. Um, so it makes sense to, to actually, to actually make it with Zebra BI. Since Zebra BI prides itself on readability, there's also one more thing. So, the keen eye among you, you could see that the business unit one was actually performing a lot better than all the other, uh, all the other business units. Um, so maybe we'd like to comment on why. So let's just write comments here. All right, and Zebra BI will automatically make a little bit of room here. Let's just type in a comment so here at business unit one, and there we go. So we can see that it also makes a highlight marker here and it's pretty easy to read now that something was going on at business unit one and we can then write uh, a more detailed explanation for the readers. Okay, so now let's just go and do a little bit more of a complicated chart just like we did before and uh, use a little bit more totals. So again, what we're going to do is go to my add-ins, but this time we are going to choose Zebra BI tables for office. And with tables, we already get this awesome distribution in a vertical axis type of way with a vertical axis chart as well. So one thing we have to do is, because Zebra is very nice and it sorts our data by the biggest contributions which for any other application would probably be the best, but since we want the waterfall chart, we would actually want to change this. So let's just change it. All right, so now that we have everything set up, the only thing we have to do is change this chart type that we have here. We're gonna move here under settings, choose a waterfall, and there we go. We already have a vertical axis waterfall chart ready for us. And since it's vertical, the categories are a lot better readable. And I also think the chart makes a lot more sense. Now we also have to tell it for our totals. So the first one is gross income, pretty easy. Right click on it, click result, and that's it. And the other one is net income, click result, and that's it. So perfect waterfall chart. But wait, wait a minute. I actually think I forgot something. So I actually forgot to include here net revenue. But with Zebra BI, pretty easy. Let's just click here on the chart somewhere around revenue adjustment. And we are going to click on add formula. Uh, it automatically sets up here where we need to be. And now we'll just have to fill in a few things and Zebra BI will automatically calculate for us our net revenues. So 
net revenues. So we're just going to write in here net revenues. This is the name. Okay, and how do we want to calculate it? Well, it's pretty easy. We're just going to take our gross. So we're just going to take our gross revenue and we're going to add to it our revenue adjustment. So we're going to add it here because, of course, they're here in the data point with a minus. So this means that we're actually subtracting revenue adjustments from the gross revenues. And now just clicking add, net revenues are added. Again, right click, set it as a result. And then also we don't want it to skip. So we'll just take this out and let's just move the comments a little bit more to the right. All right, like this, so very easily readable. And now we have what I would say is the perfect way to visualize your financial data. So here we're going from gross revenues all the way to net income, and we can see everything happening on a waterfall chart. With that, we also have this contributions right here, visualized on this awesome little bar chart that we also get with it. And we also get a pin chart that actually shows us our relative variances as well. So we can see which ones of the categories are really the most problematic. And of course, with readability, also having the comments here, I think and would argue that this is the perfect representation of your financial data. And if you think differently, come at me in the comments. <laughs> All right, data wizards. Thank you for sticking with me throughout the video. We've learned how to do a waterfall chart and what it is in Excel and how to simplify it in Zebra BI. If you like this video, like it, subscribe and check out another video, but definitely come back for part two of how to create a waterfall in Power BI.